Hey guys, welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we continue our Evolution of series here on the channel, where we take a deeper dive into some of the best known skincare brands. The reason I wanted to film this series on the channel is because I think, you know, over the past 12 months, we've all got to grips with the ingredients that we use and how they interact with our skin. We found some of our holy grail products, but how much do we actually know about the brands that create those products themselves? Probably very little, and this video is designed to counter all of that and just make sure that as consumers, we're fully informed. Today is the turn of Mario Badescu. This is a brand that's seen a surge in popularity over the past couple of years and honestly I think a lot of people might have forgotten about their very shady oftentimes illegal past and history. I'm going to cover all of that as we come to the present day and look towards the future with this brand. So sit back, relax, let's talk the evolution of Mario Badescu. Now as I said before this video actually forms part of a series on the evolution of various skincare brands. I'm going to leave a link to a playlist with all of those videos up there. Definitely worth checking out if you've missed any of the others because we've looked at The Ordinary, The Inky List, and honestly I think we can learn a whole lot about the brands that we buy from based on their history. Mario Badescu goes back quite a way and honestly they have a lot a lot of history that we're going to get through in today's video. Whilst I will be sharing everything as fact as it comes up I will be interdispersing it with some of my own thoughts, feelings and opinions. Of course they are just my own and I would encourage everyone out there to sound off in the comment section below with their own thoughts and opinions towards Mario Badescu. Are there a brand that you buy from and enjoy their products are they one like me you wouldn't touch with a barge pole sound off and let me know just promise me that whilst you're down there you'll also give this video a big thumbs up and a like this style of content takes a lot of researching and pulling together and by giving the video a thumbs up and a like it's just one small way of supporting me in the channel and honestly i would love you forever now with all that being said shall we just cut the waffle and talk mario badescu and for this brand you actually have to go back quite a long way to 1964 to be precise which is the date when mario badescu Yes, he's actually a real person. I don't, I don't know why I was surprised by that. But I think, you know, when you're doing the researching behind some of these brands, sometimes, you know, names are just that. Names created for marketing purposes. This is actually named after the founder, Mario Badescu himself, who was an esthetician who set up a salon in 1964 in New York. It was like an instant hit and sensation. Everyone flocked to it. People really liked his approach to skincare, which was very gentle, all about, you know, harnessing the health benefits of botanicals to really pay dividends in the skin, about massage, making sure that, you know, the self-care ritual wasn't forgotten about in terms of our skincare. Very much like a modern approach, because I think that's where a lot of skincare in this day and age is heading. And so honestly, I think he was very much ahead of his time. His salon was constantly booked up, apparently, though I don't know how true this rumour is, but I did read online that you had to wait 11 months at some points just to get an appointment with him at his salon. So clearly, business was booming. It was also at the start of that like, celebrity culture, where a lot of well-known celebrities, particularly actresses, really gravitated towards Mario Badescu, sung his praises and how their, his treatments had helped them retain their beauty and look their best possible self. And of course, you know, as with things today, that celebrity endorsement just drives things forward and business grew and grew and grew. It was then in 1967 that Mario Badescu created his first available for sale skincare products. He'd honed in his own preparations that he used in his treatments, but actually then put them on sale to the general public in 1967. And like with the spa treatments, honestly, it grew, grew, and grew and took off really, really quickly. He had a relatively small collection of products. I think it was five or six that he launched with, very much focusing down on creams and cleansers. The serum hadn't really been invented at that point in a really meaningful way. You know, everything was in a cream formulation. If it wasn't a cleanser, it was a moisturizer or a cream. And it was an era where you expected your products to do a whole lot. You know, you didn't reach for like a 10 step skincare routine. You wanted your moisturizer to basically do it all alongside your cleanser. And this was very much the ethos of Mario Badescu. Very streamlined collection of products to target various skin concerns. And like I said, they were popular. They sold out. In terms of the founder himself, he just continued on this very successful business streak for a couple of decades, growing the range that he had ever so slightly. Not in a huge way, but you definitely saw the number of products creep up slightly. And of course, they were adapted to meet current trends and what people were looking for from the products. He didn't rely a whole lot on celebrity advertising, which he definitely had with his salon. The products were just really fangirled about and kind of through word of mouth spread. And he got his organic sales growth through that, which honestly, 
I think should be applauded as a really great way as a business to operate. All was going well until 1983 when unfortunately Mario Badescu passed away. He was still in his business prime, you know, business was booming, people were really interested in his ethos when it came to skincare and he left behind a supremely successful business that was then entirely owned by his family, his sons who then inherited it from their father. They sold a share to Maurice Cabasso, I hope I pronounced his name right. This is a key guy that you need to remember because he didn't just, you know, touch the brand in a little small way in the 80s and then leave it alone. No, he still owns Mario Badescu today. So everything we talk about from this point can all be traced back to this one guy who is the majority shareholder alongside some of the Badescu family in the brand even today. So he got his hands on the brand and then quickly started to change things. I think the most noticeable thing was the increase in number of products that was available. I did a little bit of research around this and whilst this wasn't unique to Mario Badescu, the 80s, particularly the mid 80s, were you know a period of time where the skincare phenomenon was still bubbling under and growing in popularity. People wanted a range of different products, not just a cleanser and a moisturizer. So you know, whilst I think some of this was capitalizing on the popularity of the brand, actually it was also meeting current trends where people just wanted a larger selection of products to choose from. And Mario Badescu were definitely as a brand delivering that. This guy was. I think a bit on the old shady side if I was to look objectively as a businessman. You know, a lot of the dealings were fine, but I think there were lots of murmurings, you know, in this period of time about how the brand was actually being dealt with. There was nothing concrete until we actually get to the lawsuit, which I'm coming on to in a second in the video. But I think there was a little bit of discontent at this time. The brand also relied a lot more on marketing in this point to really sell it. Whilst the spa itself that had been set up by Mario Badescu and Kickstarter, this is still open today. So you can still go get your treatments there today if you want to. It very much took a back seat and was all about the products and driving forward profits through that. Very little happened by the constant growth in the business and the amount of products that they had to offer until 2009 hit. Quite a big jump, but honestly, this is where everything exploded for this brand. So, 2009 starts the lawsuit, the litigation era, we'll call it. How this litigation actually started, I guess it's kind of open for a little bit of negotiation. There were quite a few events around this time that I think all in their own way contributed to the lawsuit being pulled together and filed against Mario Badescu. We're going to come on to the lawsuit itself in a second, but quickly beforehand, the couple of things that led up to this. Well, first and foremost, there was a lab out of New York that was just doing some random testing on some skincare products. I don't know what they were specifically looking for, they didn't say, but one thing they did found is prescription strength concentrations of steroids in the Mario Badescu creams. Now, this is pretty alarming. Like, let's just say from the back, this is pretty alarming because of two things. First and foremost, these were prescription strengths. There's a reason that these ingredients are regulated and designed to be prescribed by a professional, not just used by any enthusiast like ourselves over the counter, because they actually have a lot of side effects and need to be used in a very specific way. Well, Mario Badescu didn't worry about that. They just put them in their standard product. But what also caused a lot of alarm is these ingredients weren't on the ingredients list. So these were slipped, hidden in the products themselves, but nobody had a clue that they were in there. Now, it's not like sometimes today you see certain ingredients labeled under different names as a way of kind of disguising. There was none of that. They just didn't bother to include it on the ingredients list. That's one way that obviously this practice was exposed. There was also a couple of women out of New York State that were going to um, through facility treatment. And as part of the tests that were done around that, they identified relatively high steroid levels in their bloodstream. Again, this was asking, the doctors asked these women, well, are you taking Taking any, you know, are you taking any oral steroids? Well, what's happening here? And they said, no, none at all that I'm aware of. And this was then traced back again to the Mario de Badescu creams that they were putting on their face. This lawsuit exploded for the brand in 2009 and a lot of the women that have been impacted by this all clubbed together to sue the brand. They sued on two different levels. First and foremost against the side effects which had been caused by these steroids being included in these products and also about the false labeling for saying, well, actually, not only did you do this, but you didn't let us know that they were actually in there, which is against so many different trading standards regulations. I think this left a lot of people really shocked because they were saying, well, why weren't the FTC and other regulators involved in this? Well, it's just a sad truth that honestly very few organizations pay a lot of attention to over-the-counter skincare products you know a lot of the focus goes on to medical grade products that are actually and you know what i think in a lot of ways that's right but the over-the-counter topically applied um, skincare market is pretty under-regulated when you compare it to some of the other markets out there and you think of the potency of some of the products being used i think that's one of the main reasons it wasn't picked up prior to these developments in this lawsuit honestly the experiences that these women had had from using these products were alarming 
farming. So some of the women that had used the products infrequently or for a short period of time were expressing issues such as excess hair growth and irregular hair growth in areas they weren't seeing it, skin thinning, some people had reported dermatitis, issues around infections as a result of that, issues surrounding flushing, so very much like hyperpigmentation exploding on the skin. There were lots of things linked to the steroids that were, were going to be called like less severe side effects. Now, honestly, all of those I would class as major side effects. And those would be the things that really would ring alarm bells. And it's really sad that people had to go through that just because of how shady this brand decided to be. Those that were classified as the lower level side effects, there were actually some women in this lawsuit who'd been using these products for 15 years. And they'd be traced back some of the medical um, issues that they were having at the time to this steroid use, such as glaucoma. So some person had almost completely lost their sight. And medical professionals linked this back to topically applied steroid use over a long and consistent period of time. People had also suffered major skin withdrawals when they stopped using these steroids because you know what, topical steroid withdrawal is very much a real thing and exists when you go cold turkey from using steroids to not use them. Of course, when people realized what was in these products, they wanted to stop straight away. And that led to its whole different level of issues surrounding that withdrawal where people started to see flaky skin, eruptions in acne, breakouts. Again, infections led to some lesions that people were suffering with. The whole thing was a nightmare and honestly the fact that the brand fought this litigation for the four year period before they finally settled I think just speaks volumes to the lack of accountability and how truly shady they are. Don't forget that through all of this Maurice who was the person that bought the brand from the family of Mario Badescu originally was still very much involved. In fact he is today. He was continuing to take the coin from us the consumer who bought these products throughout this whole period and he was definitely involved in all of the litigation. In the end four years after after this started in 2009, the brand settled. But there's a couple of things I think worth noting. So they never actually admitted fault in any of this beyond saying, yes, we forgot to put it on the ingredients list. Really? You forgot to put the most powerful and potent ingredient on your ingredients list? That isn't an oversight. That's not a clerical error somewhere in the admin department. That was very much deliberate. And they did admit to false advertising and marketing for not including these steroids on the list. They never actually admitted that any of the side effects and the long-term medical conditions that the women were suffering with had anything to do with these steroids. And I guess, I don't know, I wasn't that, I'm certainly not a lawyer, but I think it was too hard to prove that it was categorically these creams to really be able to nail it on the brand themselves. So what they did is they agreed to take the steroids out of the product. I mean... I kind of feel that's like the minimum level of requirement, but they did continue to sell the two products in question for about three years after the lawsuit settled. They have now discontinued, but honestly, this is really, if ever there was a case for just discontinuing something, it was in this moment that they should have acted. What I think really was the most alarming and shocking thing about, well, it's twofold. They never actually apologized for doing this. So at no point did Mariso, as the leader, you know, the CEO of this corporation say, I own this, this is on me, it all happened under my watch and I'm sorry. They kind of, you know, agreed that they had to settle, took out, you know, the steroids from the products and then just carried on selling like nothing had ever happened. They did say that anybody that wanted to settle with the brand could for the, get this, for the princely sum of a $45 gift voucher for Mario Badescu products. Like, <laughs> just let that sink in. A $45 gift voucher for Mario Badescu products. Now, the women who were actually part of this lawsuit, I believe, well, it was confidential, but I believe we'll have got a larger settlement than that. But anyone else that wasn't part of this lawsuit but was suffering with the same side effects thought, having read this, yes, this is me, this, this rings true, what they could get their hands on was a $45 gift card to Mario Badescu that could be spent on products or their Inspire experience. Well, that is a real treat. Honestly, if anyone took them up on that offer, no, I would never go anywhere near. If that happened to me, I would go nowhere near the shady, nasty, unapologetic brand. But that's what they offered. So you know what? Sound off in the comment section below. Do we think that's fair recompense for what people have gone through? Would you have cashed in the $45 gift card? I like a good bargain myself, but no, I feel this is a pass. What I'd love to be able to say at this point is this is where the story ends. And actually, this shady, nasty, unapologetic brand got its just desserts and they now cease to exist. Unfortunately, they don't. So we're kind of at the 2014 period now. And this is where Mario Badescu decided to do a cheeky little rebrand, you know, change some of the packaging on their formulations, discontinue the ones that had steroids in, because we don't need we don't need that bad, you know, that bad reputation following us, and then relaunch the brand. They started to be stocked in Urban Outfitters. They were available on ASOS, which is one of the 
biggest online clothing retailers. And honestly, people couldn't get enough of Mario Badescu. As the years rolled on, you saw endorsements from celebrities, you saw Victoria's Secrets models. Clearly there was some relationship with that because just about every Victoria's Secret model in their like get ready with me videos was using Mario Badescu products. People couldn't get enough of their rose mist spray. Now, even if you could look beyond what clearly was a very, very unforgivable set of events and lawsuit, even if you look beyond that, the products themselves aren't actually that great. They're definitely not in keeping with the ethos of the original founder who was all about gentle, effective skincare. They're often packed full of colorants, artificial fragrance, potentially sensitizing ingredients. I think if you have even a whiff of skin sensitivity, you should go nowhere near Mario Badescu. I think for most people, their products will just be overpriced and might deliver some marginal benefit. But honestly, having tried a couple of them before I found out about all of this, I was really, really underwhelmed and the price point isn't cheap. Also, the reformulation, whilst people went mad for the packaging, I'll leave some images of it here, people went mad for the packaging and said how gorgeous it was. Actually, it strikes me as kind of just a little bit low rate. I, I don't find this packaging particularly appealing. Is that just me or is that something that you guys, like, sound off with what your thoughts and feelings are on the packaging. It kind of always looks like a little bit of a copycat knockoff, even though it isn't. It just looked a bit low level and cheap in my opinion, but people fell in love with this brand. I think at one point, like Kim Kardashian was saying how amazing it was. It had just about every celebrity fangirling about it. Their sales grew and grew and grew. Even this year in 2022, Mario Badescu products featured very heavily in like the best buy section of some of the best selling beauty blogs and magazines from Marie Claire through to Allure. They were all saying how amazing the Mario Badescu products were. I honestly don't see the appeal based on the formulations alone, but I just think, have we all forgotten? It wasn't that long ago that people were suing this brand for the way that they decided to underhand put in prescription strength ingredients without notifying any of the consumers and then remove them without apologizing, really acknowledging they'd done anything wrong. I'm a huge believer in second chances. Actually, you know what? Brands like people screw up. We all at some point in our lives have made a mistake and had to ask for a second chance. And I'm a great believer of paying it forward and honestly giving people a second chance. But I think there's a few caveats to that. I think first and foremost, the brand has to admit that they've actually done something wrong in the first place. I think they have to apologize for it publicly and you know without any caveats say look I'm genuinely sorry for the situation and I think they have to make amends for that I just think Mario Badescu have fa failed on all three accounts they never actually admitted they did anything wrong they certainly never apologized and if you think that $45 gift card is like recompense then maybe you're more forgiving than me but for me that definitely isn't enough I think to really compensate everything that's gone on before the brand just forgets that that ever happened however if you do a little search you'll notice that Mario Badescu are doing quite a lot in the background in terms of search engine optimization and promotion advertising to make sure that the pages promoting their products has been amazing, hit you first. And actually, you've got to scroll a long way down Google till you actually find some of the reviews and things covering the steroid scandal. I also think it's worth noting that the same guy that oversaw all of this, in fact, probably instigated it, is now still in control and owns Mario Badescu. Every time someone buys a Mario Badescu product, it lines his pockets with profit. And honestly, that's not okay. I don't think he thinks he's done anything wrong. I think he probably feels a bit sorry that he got caught out. You know, I don't think there's any sort of attempt to say sorry or to change things. It's the same brand doing the same shady things. And in the back of my mind, I think at this point, if they could do that before, what's stopping them doing it again? How do we know that their products aren't packed full of loads of potentially harmful and illegal substances? We actually don't. You know, a lot of the time we have to place our trust in these brands. Once that trust is broken, honestly, I don't think you can win it back that easily. Certainly if you don't do anything to really deserve that. So for me, Mario Badescu is a big fail. I would ask everybody at this point in the video to share this video if you got this far. I don't often ask people to share the content, but you know, I think this message needs to get out there. I rarely tell people that they shouldn't buy from a brand. All skincare is unique, it's individual. And I think as consumers, we'll need to reach for the brands that meet our budget, our ethical considerations, and in terms of delivering the products that meet our skin's requirements. But in this case, I think it's justified to say, I would ask everyone to not buy from Mario Badescu, at least until they issue an unreserved apology, actually do some proper compensating of the people that may suffer from this. I just think every time we reach and buy one of their products, all we're doing is lining the pockets of the same shady owner that actually oversaw all of this. That's just my thoughts, feelings, and pennyworth, but you know what? I'd love to know what you guys think, so sign up in the comments section below. That is a very brief run down of the history of Mario Badescu, a brand which I think started really well. I think Mario himself actually had 
have everyone's best intentions and skin at heart. You know, that gentle approach to skincare, the way that you were matching botanicals with what they could deliver from the skin, that's actually, you know, decades ahead of its time and something that a lot of brands are trying to do now. That I totally applaud. I think it's just unfortunate, well, it's obviously unfortunate that he passed away, but that his legacy has been tarnished by the shady actions of people that have bought into this brand and also his family that have allowed this to happen as co-owners. I think it's time that we moved on from Mario Badescu and I hope, you know, in a polite and professional way, if anybody does, if we see anybody using these products and fangirling about them, maybe just leave the link to this video or some of the reports surrounding this lawsuit that went on because I think a lot of people might be using the products without truly knowing. And you know what? The more informed we are as consumers, the better decisions we can make. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this installment of the video. If you haven't already, check out some of the other ones on the Ordinary and the Ink list I've already done. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.